St Petersburg will open a flood barrier in 2010, which runs from Bronka in the south to Gorskaya in the north. It's the result of efforts spanning several decades across countries and cultures. And the need for it has become increasingly urgent. With its cathedrals and picturesque canals, the city is known as the Venice of the North. But its idyllic position at the edge of the Nieva Bay leaves it vulnerable to storm surges from the Gulf of Finland. The city has flooded almost every year since it was founded in 1703. In 1824, the effects were so devastating that Alexander Pushkin was moved to describe them in his poem, The Bronze Horseman. In a flood, the water level can rise at about a metre per hour. That's the sort of rate it will come up. And a 10 foot rise, three metres, will flood 40 square miles. That covers the city. It's a significant event. Work on the barrier began in the 1970s. But Perestroika and Glasnost put it on hold until the late 1990s. In 2003, the Ministry of Regional Development in St Petersburg asked Halcro and other agencies to bring it back to life. The £1.8 billion required to build it came from the Russian federal budget and the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development. The barrier is designed to withstand a one in a thousand year flood. Its six and a half metre high embankment runs for 25 kilometres. And it has two major navigation channels, protected by huge steel gates that can be closed quickly in a storm or potentially environmental disaster. Six enormous sluices manage water flow between Nieva Bay and the Gulf of Finland that have their own steel gates. The barrier doubles up as a six-lane motorway, which runs along the top as part of the St. Petersburg Ring Road. The road crosses the smaller navigation via a lift bridge. The gate itself is just over two and a half thousand tonnes. It's lifted on these four hydraulic cylinders. In order to allow the traffic to flow, we have a steel lifting bridge here, which can raise nine metres to give 25 metres clearance. At the main navigation channel, the road disappears into a tunnel under the water. Works here started two years ago. There they're installing reinforcement and making grillage. Here you see prepared piles, here constructing piles, and there the foundation for piling works. What Halker inherited was an unfinished structure. When we arrived on site, the actual gate sections themselves, prefabricated in the 1990s, were just waiting for the project to start up again. South of Kotlin, the embankment was part built to a low level, and the two sea sluices were half complete. The embankment and sluices to the north of Kotlin Island were all substantially built and in place, and the box girder bridge at the secondary navigation channel was sitting on the ground, rusting away. The sea channel was a deep hole covered in scrub and home to a pack of wild dogs. When the design was originally conceived, the design wind and wave was a one in 50 year. Now, because of the change in the, the SNPs, the Russian standards and norms, that then had to become one in 100 year. That, of course, meant that when you looked at the design of the gate and the arm and the hinge, there were slightly different loads on it. So that had to be reworked. Adding a further layer of complexity, input from different countries and cultures had to be managed, and carefully in some cases. We ended up with 10 companies with their own individual specialisms, which were part of the team that we then had working on the design of this. So you know, managing all of this, pulling it all together, getting it coordinated, um, it, you know, it's been a bit of an issue. The whole of the design had to go through an approval process. We have normal Russian practice and Russian law, and we have these contracts, which are aphidic contracts. The two are not always compatible. To complicate things further, Russian Prime Minister Vladimir Putin, a former student of St. Petersburg University, asked for the barrier to open two years ahead of schedule. So by the end of 2010, Halkro will have completed its work, and the people of St. Petersburg will be safe from the flooding that has blighted their lives for the last three centuries. <laughs> <laughs>